This is Damian Macy representing the Friends of the Marshall Public Library and our oral history project. Today is Tuesday, December the 15th of 2015 and I'm visiting at the lovely home of Agnes Miller at 115 North 13th Street and with that Agnes has been a longtime resident of Marshall and I think she's probably got some interesting things to say. So with that, I'll introduce you, Agnes. You're on. Good afternoon. I'm glad to be a part of the oral history. Now, where do I go from there? What, wherever. This. It, yeah, okay. if you want to tell about some of your oh, family. Yeah. I was born near Clarksville. At that time, most all children were born at home. And my mother and father already had three boys, and mother had said that she didn't care if I was a girl or a boy because she was going to feel sorry for me if I were a girl. And I turned out to be a girl and mother's real helper and two brothers followed me and then three sisters. So we talked about the three big boys, the two little boys and the three little girls and I was the one stuck in the middle. And I was always mother's helper. And I know I was asked at one time when I was getting a moment if I got married to leave home and I said no I really enjoyed everything that I did at home and I didn't feel that I had to leave home to get away from it all. So there were how many in the family as children? Nine, Nine. of us. Okay. I've always lived in Marshall after I became an adult. I went to, I started grade school when I was five years old because at that time most country kids did get to start when they were five years old. And fortunately, my Aunt Georgia Connerton, who was my dad's sister, was my teacher. And one of the things that I remember most about Aunt Georgia and school was one time Junior Morgan got into trouble with the teacher and I kind of bounced up and down in my seat clapping my hands and the rest of the class tattled on me when they came back in from out on the porch and uh, I lied. It was the first time I remember telling a lie and I said no I didn't do that but I had done it. I think she knew that I lied. You mentioned your mother and dad. Would you like to mention their names also? Oh, my mother was Annette Waller-Staub, Annette Agnes Waller-Staub. So I received her name as well as my grandmother's name, whose name was Agnes. And my father was Joseph Benjamin Staub. Okay. And uh, mother was five years older than dad, but they had a, a, a good marriage. And I don't recall now how many years they were married. Let's see, um, they were married in 1919, and mother passed away in 1980. So, however many years that adds up to. My dad lived uh, four years after mother passed away. Um, you lived north of Clarksville too, didn't you? Well, north and east of Clarksville. Um, we walked to school. It was a mile and a quarter. And back at that time, all the kids walked to school. Nobody thought anything about walking. And I'm sure it was good for us. And we gathered up other kids as we went to school. And so there was quite a few of us who walked to school. And one time when we were kids, mother sent me and my brother Morris to Clarksville with a bucket of eggs on a Friday to trade the eggs for salmon because we were Catholic and we mm -hmm. ate fish at that time on Fridays. And uh, my brother just begged me to let him carry that bucket of eggs. And I knew that I shouldn't let him carry the bucket of eggs, <laughs> but he did. And as we rounded the corner at the end of our road, he dropped the bucket and a bunch of the eggs broke. So we were walking on down the road crying 
and a real nice lady, Mrs. Rhett Graham, came out to see what we were crying about. So, of course, we told her, and she said, you know, we're having an ice cream social at the Clarksville Baptist Church tonight, and I need to make a cake. So I'll take your broken eggs and wow. replace them with good eggs, <laughs> which she did. <coughs> And that's a story that I've remembered all my life but about how she kind was she was. She was your savior then, wasn't she? She was. She was. And, uh, I'm going to tell it, Agnes about some of your early memories of childhood and home. You had some. I'm sure you had plenty of errands you had to do around the house. <laughs> well, one of the things that was my job on s Saturday was wash the windows. And we kids, since there was nine of us, we played a lot outdoors and we had a, a path about two yards wide all the way around the house from running and racing each other. <coughs> and that was my job, to, to sweep our path. And uh, like I said, I was always mother's helper, so there was always chores to do. I loved reading the newspaper, and I remember there were times that I would be frying the potatoes at the stove and reading the newspaper at the same time. And we it could be a little dangerous. <laughs> yeah, we had a, a window seat at our house too, which I love sitting on that window seat to read. And uh, reading was my favorite pastime. And uh, my dad had a cousin from Chicago who, when he would come down, would bring a bunch of comic books and one thing or another. And so uh, I, as I said, I'd love to read. And. We had no electricity at that time either, so we had just oil lamps, and then when we got an Aladdin lamp, that was a oh. lot of light to us. Sure. And I would sit there at night, mother and dad would be in bed, and dad would say, Agnes, get to bed. I'd say, just one more page. Agnes, get to bed. Well, I haven't finished the page yet. Agnes, get to bed. <laughs> and finally, I <laughs> would concede and go to bed. <laughs> uh, I love school, and uh, I love to to write stories. Hmm. And uh, I would use different verbs like walked, ran, sauntered, just any kind of a ver. ver excuse me, any kind of a verb to be different, to use all different verbs in my stories. And um, I suppose at that time I thought I'd be a great writer, but I never became <laughs> one. And um, one of the funny things I remember too, my brother Morris didn't speak plainly, and uh, his first grade teacher and my second grade teacher was Mrs. Jessie Pierce. And since he couldn't say Pierce, he'd say Mrs. Piss. <laughs> and we thought that was funny. Did she, how would she react to that? She was okay with it. Okay. She, knew, she knew he couldn't talk plain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with the, uh, that many children in the family, preparation of a meal must have been quite a production, wasn't it? Yeah, but... Uh, our mother always gave us healthy meals, and one of our treats on Saturday was a little pile of raisins, and each one of us had a handful of raisins that were put out on the table, and we each came and got our pile of raisins, and that was our, our treat. Then as we got older, we went to, we were Catholic, and uh, besides attending Mass on Sundays and Holy Days, we had catechism on uh, Saturday afternoon at that time, and uh, Dad would bring us to town to go to catechism. And then after we got out of catechism, our treat was a ice cream cone at Rademacher's. Ooh, yes. And that we loved. What was your favorite kind of ice cream? All of it. <laughs> it was a real treat. And back at that time, we made homemade ice cream, too. And in the summertime, that was a real treat to have homemade ice cream. Agnes, you mentioned not having electricity. 
what about keeping foods and stuff cool? Did you put it in the well? Yes, yes. Um, of course, we didn't have too much food. We had to, <laughs> had to keep cool, cool because we ate it all. Uh, uh, in the summertime, Mother would plan on having enough at noon so that we had leftovers for our evening meal. Did you have a big garden? Oh yes, yes. We had uh, a big garden as well as what we called a truck patch. And okay. uh, that gave kids something to do too, was to do the gardening. And I love flowers. And there were times that I had uh, another garden near the house that had flowers in it. And I really enjoyed that. Did your folks <coughs> have some livestock so that you had your own pigs? We had and a your milk cow. Cattle? We had a milk cow. But outside of that, I don't recall much in the way of livestock. Uh, later, my sisters had a horse to ride. Uh, my grandparents lived about a mile from us and they had a, a gray horse that was called Old Stone. <laughs> and I remember, of course, three or four of us would get on the back of that horse to ride. And I remember one time we had had beets for our dinner and we were bouncing along from our house up to Grandma and Grandpa's house and it made me sick and I puked beets all over the back side of Old Stone. So. He had a red side to him. <laughs> Did think people think he'd been injured when they got there? <laughs> that I don't recall. <laughs> I just remember the occasion. With uh, uh, <clears throat> your chores around home, and you mentioned you love to read, did uh, you sometimes want to read when maybe there was a chore that should be done? You mentioned reading while you were at the well, stove. Well, I did that, <clears throat> but you know, Back then, kids listened to their parents, and if they told you to do something or not to do it, you didn't do it. it. And I recall one time that my brother Bernard and my brother Joe Jr. would pick on each other and fight and fight. <laughs> and one time, Mother made them go out in the, by the wood pile, and she stood with a stick of wood, and she said, now fight. And they'd want to quit, and she said, no, just keep fighting. And I don't know how long that went on, but it seemed like a long time, and I, I'm sure it seemed like longer to them. <laughs> and uh, Joe Junior loved to pick on us kids. It was just a, a part <laughs> of his thing. And uh, one of our games was we had a goat that was called Billy, uh -huh. and Billy loved to chase us. So we had a, a big porch that went clear across the front of the house. And we would jump up on the porch, and Billy <laughs> would jump up too. And so we wanted to get across the other end of the porch before Billy butted us. And then one time, we were we kids were on the porch, <laughs> and it was the game was jump off the porch before you get kicked. <laughs> and uh, I turned around and got kicked in the mouth and got a broken tooth out of it. From Billy? No, from one of my well, brothers okay. or sisters. <clears throat> Probably a brother. <laughs> uh, that went with me pretty well to my adulthood till I had it ground off and <laughs> fixed. With the uh, <clears throat> games and all like that, I'm going to go to school now. What did you play at recess? Do you recall some of the games or what you did? Well, we played Black Man a lot. And we also played Dare I. And uh, we also played, we called it Andy Over. Oh. Uh, we played that at school. And of course, we all had foot races too. That was a part of it. And uh, the boys had their restroom or their toilet on one side of the big schoolyard and the girls had their uh, toilet on the other side and nobody ever peeked on anybody else. Like I said, kids were mannerly back at that time. Mm -hmm. 
You didn't uh, have a refrigerated drinking fountain either, did you? Oh, no, no, <laughs> no. Uh, we, there were boys who carried the water in from a pump or the well, and as near as I remember, we had a common drinking cup. And I don't know that anybody got anything from somebody else. You didn't worry about it if you were thirsty, no, did you? No. What about the, uh, I guess, the appearance of the school? Do you remember about it? Our school had two rooms to it. And at one time, there had been, uh, I think it was a two-year high school at that time. Ooh. And uh, But when I was in <coughs> school, the second room was used as a playroom on bad days, but at later time, then they had two teachers and it was divided up into, I think, four mm -hmm. grades on one side and four Good. grades on the other. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Hello? No, I can't. I don't have a car and I'm having an uh, oral interview for uh, the library. All right. great-grandson thinks I was put on this earth to take care of him. <laughs> so you were telling about the, going that <laughs> you were telling about the school and uh, <clears throat> just what you remember about the school itself. Well uh, actually we had a big furnace that was in the middle of the classroom and uh, the school teacher had always got there early. Now I know in some schools, older boys took care of the fire, but as near as I can recall, the teacher did it at our school. And um, I had a Mr. Everett Clapp as one of my teachers. And then George Swartz was my teacher. And uh, he thought I was really smart and wanted me to be in the county spelling bee and uh, I stayed after school to practice. This may be bad. Anyway, he made a, a gesture toward me that I told my folks about, and that was the end of my being considered for the spelling bee. Did uh, you, I guess you must have liked spelling. Oh, I loved it. I was good at it. Did they? I have, always made, uh, made 100. <laughs> did you have contests within the classes? Oh, yes, school? yes. We always had spelling bees. If I recall right, it was on Fridays. It was a part of the right. end of the school week that we had spelling bees and tried to spell down all of them. And I was frequently a winner. With uh, going to school, uh, I know there wasn't such a thing as a cafeteria. What did Mother send you for lunch? Do you recall? Well, we sometimes had egg sandwiches, and we had delicious palmetto spread. Now, some of my sisters Ooh. and brothers did not like that on their sandwiches, oh. but I loved it, and I still make it today. And um, we had lard buckets or, or sorghum buckets mm -hmm. that we carried our dinner in. Uh, at that, back at that time, bread wrappers were in wax paper and we always saved the bread wrappers to wrap our sandwiches in. Okay. And um, Dad and I were usually the ones who made the, the school lunches because Mother was always busy getting the other kids up and getting them ready for school too. And um, our Aunt Georgie, bless her heart, uh, was, as I mentioned before, was a school teacher. And about a quarter of a mile down the road, our road and theirs intersected, and there was a big uh, post at the end of the road there. And Aunt Georgie would a lot of times call and tell us that there was a sack of bananas or a sack of oranges or something there for us to take to school for our school lunches. And that's one of the things that I remember about her, too. And uh, back at that time, you had the rural telephones, and 
Uh, I think our ring was three longs and a short. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> Grandpa and Grandma and the aunts had a phone too, so it was easy to call each other. And uh, one time when we were kids, uh, we were romping around in the boys' bedroom. There were two double beds in that one bedroom. And uh, boys always carried stuff in their pockets. And my sister Kay swallowed something and she pointed in her throat. And I knew that she had something stuck in her throat. So I carried her out to mother and, and she called Aunt Georgie and I had to hold Kay on my lap and I can remember my knees shaking while I was holding her. And uh, mother asked Aunt Georgie to take her into the doctor. So I stayed with the rest of the kids while mother and Aunt Georgie came to the doctor and then the doctor took mother and Kay on over to the hospital because he couldn't do anything about it. And uh, at the hospital, they were able to remove it, but the doctor came out and said to my mother, I thought there for a little bit that we had lost her, but we right. didn't. And she came back home the same day. Do you know what it was that she swallowed? A Model T timer. Oh. It was, oh. you know. Oh, gee. So was the doctor in town in Marshall? Or was the he doctor in they the came to was Dr. Mitchell, Dr. E. H. Mitchell, okay. here in Marshall. But then he drove her on to Terre Haute to the hospital where they removed it. He was my grandmother's doctor also. Is that right? What, uh, again, coming back to the, uh, to the school and the, the games and all, <clears throat> Did you feel you learned a lot from the recitation of classes that were maybe ahead of you? Oh yes, you always listened in on <laughs> the others, especially if you were interested in school. And uh, I loved school. I had the aunt who was a school teacher and an aunt who was a beautician. And from, <laughs> an, early, from an early age, I knew I either wanted to be a beautician or a school teacher and the war came along and being a school teacher would have taken more education and months of study mm -hmm. than going to beauty school because when I went to beauty school uh, it was 1,000 hours over a six mm -hmm. months period so uh, anyway I chose that and then worked for my aunt for a number of years until I started my own shop. So how long or how many years did you go to the country school in Clarksville? Go to the school? Mm -hmm. Eight years. It was, it was eight an eight-year eight school. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, at that time they didn't, I didn't come into town. Yeah. And you know what year you graduated from that eighth grade? From high school? No, from grade school. It would have been 1938. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I graduated from high school in 1942. Okay. Did uh, <coughs> excuse me. Did you go to Marshall much for shopping, or did you do most of your uh, trading in groceries and all in Clarksville? <coughs> as near as I can remember, we did some shopping. There was Emma Fox's store. Mm -hmm. and Everett Clapp's store and what we did was mostly at Emma Fox's store and um, as we got older mother and dad always went to Paris oh. and did the shopping at a store there while I was left in charge <laughs> of the rest of the kids at home but we were all assigned different jobs to do and we rotated like one week one would have the living room and one would have the dining room and one would have the kitchen okay. and uh, we just did our jobs it was expected of us and we did it was the <coughs> fox store groceries or was it called a general store that it was a general everything? store it was a general store okay. 
Now that did not have electricity either, did it? Well, it wouldn't have had because we didn't have real electrification until after the war. So what do you remember about the day you got electricity? I wasn't living at home when we got electricity, <laughs> so I have no memory okay. of it. I was going to say, I bet Mother got a refrigerator and maybe it's even a stove too, but that time. Uh, <clears throat> we had a gas stove, but... Did she have a gas washing machine too? Yeah. Well, you always had to start it with a foot pedal of some uh, sort. I, I don't know. I suppose it was gasoline, gasoline. propelled. Yeah. That wasn't my job. <laughs> I hung it out or, or took it off the line or ironed, but <laughs> There'd be a doing lot of laundry line. hanging out there with that yeah. many kids. <clears throat> with graduating from the uh, school there in Clarksville, how did you come into town? Did you stay in town for high school or did someone bring you? No. Uh, we had a, a Model A car oh. and I had brothers who drove. I don't think you even had to have a license at that time. And uh, anyway, you didn't have to have seat belts, and you could pile as many as you could into a car. So uh, my brothers always picked up other kids to ride into town too. Mm -hmm. So now I don't know that they shared on gasoline. I have no recollection of of that. I just know that we had a car we called it was painted blue oh. and we called it old blue heaven and uh, it served many years to get to school and uh, of course years later school buses came along but right. not not in my time yeah the price for gas then oh, like 17 cents or something be a few cents a gallon but. yeah but money was pretty sparse mm -hmm. Our dad was a Mormon mineral salesman, oh, yeah. and, uh, and he was successful at it, and uh, dad was well liked, and uh, as he got older, he was uh, the instigator of the Marshall Senior Citizens, and was chairman of the first fall festival. Really? Wow. Uh, uh, this isn't for the record. <laughs> I remember Dutch, my husband, came home and he had been to the bar and said, this woman, it's, what was her name? Well, she had the bar on the south side of the street and she just thought my dad was awful. <laughs> that he shouldn't be doing what he was doing. <laughs> but he was... He was successful at it. Did uh, he and travel? That was the first one. Did he travel quite a bit outside of the Clark County territory? No, no. Um, with the company that he was with, he was assigned an area, and it was Acre County. Oh. Okay. And he called on farmers to sell mineral products. So he was home then every. every home month. every evening. Okay. Yes, and we could look out the window and watch for him to come home, and we could see about a mile away and it was called the North Road and we could see the headlights coming down the, the road and we'd go in the pantry and watch for dad to come home. And I'm sure he was glad to get home too. Uh, <laughs> I suppose he was but <laughs> I'm sure we were pretty noisy and demanding. <laughs> Are there some memories you have about the uh, high school and the old uh, old high school building that used to be there? <laughs> I remember being up on the third floor and we would spin out the window to see it splat on the concrete below. <laughs> and on the third floor was where the business courses were and biology also. Did you have a favorite subject that you liked in school? Oh, I liked high school. I was not an especially good student in high school. Uh, I made everything from an A to a D. <laughs> 
but I enjoyed school. <laughs> I got in mixed course, and I must have been a pain to Mr. Lackey <laughs> because was that Bill? Bill yeah. Lackey? He would come around and say, uh, "Sing an ah for me." Well. <laughs> My ass probably sound like a sheep bind. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my kids and grandkids say, Mom, you just say the words, you can't sing. <laughs> and I can't. I do not know one note from another. And at church, I seldom sing unless it's something that I think is real easy and that maybe I can sort of carry a tune. Uh, I love music. But I have no musical ability at all. My mother was the same way. She liked it, but she didn't know A from Q or any of it. Is that right? And you're gifted. <coughs> well, maybe you, a little bit. Uh, so with you're willing anyway. With uh, <coughs> with school, and your brother bringing you in and taking you home, were you able to <coughs> participate in any of the activities in school then, or not? They had uh, what they called GAA, mm -hmm. and we put on a production every spring, and and yes, I did participate in that, but um, I'm sure it was a hardship for my family. You didn't do any solos in in musical productions, I guess. Oh, heavens to Betsy, no. I'm, I'm sure that Mr. Lackey was glad when I quit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, you sound like you've got some fond memories of the old uh, old place over there. You know, one time we were on the radio station. We performed over in Terre Haute. I think it was WBOW that we performed for. Uh, I don't remember how it came about or anything like that, but I was one of the participants. Uh, you can honestly say then you had a radio personality. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> With those uh, those years in high school in, and you mentioned you graduated, I believe, in 1942. Yes. It? What happened I, then? Well, I made the, the well. Can we back up to oh, sure. uh, the war came along, and uh, I remember. Uh, when war was, when uh, Pearl Harbor was bombed on a Sunday afternoon and uh, some of us had dates together. Of course, back at that time you double dated and safety in numbers. <laughs> and uh, I was always supposed to be home by nine o'clock and I remember one time I was angry at my mother and I said, well, if I wanted to do anything wrong, I could do it before nine o'clock. <laughs> But, uh, did she have a response to that? I don't recall. <laughs> I bet she did. I don't recall. Uh, she probably was stunned. Uh, we we were most fortunate to have good parents. I I just realize all these years how blessed we truly truly Looking were. Looking back, I think. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> uh, uh, I had to make a decision what I wanted to do, and I decided I wanted to go to beauty school. Like I said, it was mm -hmm. a shorter period of time, and uh, I went to Varner's Beauty School in Paris, and uh, I, my dad would take me because, well, somebody had to take me anyway, but he was going to be going to work anyway in Edgar County, and I would cry every Monday going back up to Paris and uh, my dad was softer hearted than my mother was but of course he was the one who had to listen to me and he wanted to let me quit school and mother said no she always wanted to be a beauty operator and we've paid for it it was fifty dollars and uh, said that she has to go so then my dad decided, well, I'll let Agnes drive. Maybe that'll keep her mind off of it. Oh. Uh, and I, I did get to drive on Monday mornings going back, but 
I was always glad when Saturday afternoon came and they picked me up to bring me back home. And Dad would say, well, she doesn't want to get home so bad as to walk through the house and then go to town with her brothers. <laughs> Which we did on Saturday nights. The big thing was to go to town and see your friends. So from what you're saying, that you stayed in Paris then during the week, is that right? Yeah, the <coughs> foreigners had an upstairs that they rented out to we girls who were going to beauty school, and we had cooking privileges in the basement. And uh, I know one time I was crying, and Mrs. Varner said, I wouldn't give anything for a girl who didn't get homesick. And she sympathized with me because... <laughs> I had never, back at that time, kids didn't stay away from home no. overnight. And uh, I just missed all my brothers and sisters and, and home so much that I was, I was really glad when the, a week would end and I could come back home. How many were staying in the house then at that time? There just a I couple think there were them? four of us. Four. <clears throat> there were four of us. Were they all going to beauty school then? Yes. Time? And... Uh, Georgia Siegel, to me, was an old woman at that time, and she was going to beauty school. I don't know that she ever really did anything with her education, but she wanted to be a beautician, and she did go to school. Uh, there was a, of course, we were called Miss Staub, Miss <laughs> Mrs. Siegel, and uh, there was a, a girl named Elvira Lang, and uh, mm -hmm. the name eludes me, but her last name was Smith Camp. The one was from Kansas, and and the other was from uh, Paris. Mrs. Siegel was West Union. Where was she? The... Was Shirley Morton's mother? Oh yeah. Where was the school located up there? Up over Primrose Drugstore. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure where it was. Uh -huh. On the alley. And uh, Pinky Tanner, who was a nephew of the Pyramids, was uh, uh, working at the drugstore. And uh, he liked all the girls, and we liked him too. <laughs> So how did you, at that time, feel <coughs> Marshall was better than Paris, or was Paris much bigger, and now oh, that's the better place to be? Or I guess, did you make a comparison? I guess I was so homesick for Marshall that Marshall was the big best thing. Place. I, I felt comfortable in Marshall. And uh, no, Paris didn't have any allure to me. Okay. So... How long was the program then with the beauty school? You mentioned a thousand hours, I believe. Over a six months period. Six month period. And then you took your state cosmetology. Okay. That's why I wondered what took place after that. The license, yeah. And uh, I got to start working for my Aunt Odelia oh, the yeah. first day of March before I was 18 in April. And I've been an active beautician ever since. Yeah. Where was her beauty shop at that time? Was it in National Marshall Dixie? National in the National Dixie. Dixie. Hotel. It was always in the National Dixie. Because okay. I remember uh, going there as a little kid with mother to get her hair fixed. Uh, days. I remember that a lady came in and wanted me to cut her hair, and they didn't even teach me hair cutting <laughs> in beauty school. What hair cutting I learned, I learned from my aunt. Okay. Uh, and I don't know what they called it, but it was the uh, permanent, wave, permanent wave things with all the wires coming uh -huh. down and the clamps. Yeah. Those looked like torture machines. <laughs> well, people liked it. Uh, we had a pointer, and he told us if it got hot, we had a blower that blew. Then cold waves came out a few years later. And they weren't really cold either, were no, they? No, <laughs> no. But you didn't have the heat put on your head. There was machinist perms too, yeah. but they had a, a pad that did heat. Yeah, that's. I guess that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Uh -huh. So were you and Odelia then both operating in the same shop then for a while? Yes, yes. 
I started earning $12 a week, working long hours. And glad to get it, I'll bet, though, uh, too, right? Definitely, definitely. So did she have some particular techniques and things that you were able to pick up on? or? Well, I learned a lot from her. Uh, how to treat a customer was one thing, okay. you know, to always be friendly. And uh, like I said, I learned my hair cutting from her, how to part the hair off and <laughs> section it. And, and uh, back at that time, there were only a couple beauty shops in town. Now we're loaded with them. <laughs> where, do you recall where some of the other shops were around town? I know there were, you said two or three, and I can think of Well, there was one ways. on North 6th Street. I remember a, a gal named Alice Duncan worked there, and uh, Kathy Brooks worked there. Hmm. Uh, Kathy was... Um, Oh, golly. Marilyn. Marilyn Plantfelder's mom. Oh, yes. Marilyn Taylor. So were any of them from your class come down to Marshall to have a shop? No. Yeah. No. No, pretty, pretty much everybody went back to their hometown and opened their own shop or worked for somebody that was already established. It's a, uh, I can't think of the name now. Do you remember Bob Hedges? The name sounds familiar, but I don't think I knew him. The girl he married lived on North 7th Street. Oh, and the mother had a shop in her home. I can't think of the name, though, now. Huh. Was the uh, <coughs> was the business at that time very much uh, very much? Hello. Uh, hey, I want you to look at your room. Oh, there's my phone again. Remember your question. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations. Jace, do you know Damien? Yeah, I've met him before. Yeah, okay. I think so. I was just wondering if, oh, if only three shops, did everyone kind of specialize in something or were you all just general competitors to each other? What? There's a car. Micah does. She took hers to Terre Haute to be worked on. Oh. Or J.R. Well, she took mine to pick him up or something or other. Were, oh, were you kind of competing with each other or did you kind of have a specialty and this other gal oh, have another specialty? Or? Not, not really. Back at that time, hardly anyone had hair color. <laughs> um, they may have had a henna pack or something, but... Uh, no, we didn't do any of that. We just had temporary rinses in the shop where I worked. So you I don't know what the others did, but back at that time, hair coloring was not a, a thing, not even bleaching hair. Really? Okay. Did you have your clients, did you do any advertising, or was it pretty much by word of mouth? And it was word of mouth. Uh, advertising was not a big thing I back at that so. time. No, nobody advertised. You just depended on people passing the word. Was a lot of it done at home too, or uh, shops in their home? You mean? No, I mean ladies doing their own hair rather than going to a beautician. Oh, Maybe yes, mom because mom cutting the kids' because, hair because. Yeah, been, uh, no. Home Permanence came out about okay. that time and and when I started and people were doing at least their children's hair at home. They may have gone to the beauty shop to get their own done or have a friend to roll it up for them. Or they might come in to get a haircut and then have somebody else put their perm in for them. But uh, 
of course now straight hair and hair color just the thing You've seen some obviously very strange trends in the time. I have seen some pictures and the, some of the hair looks like stood up about that high. I don't know if they teased it or whatever you call yeah, it. Yeah. But teasing. you've seen some really wild trends on that. Yeah. Oh, I really have. And one of the ones that I think is atrocious <laughs> is where they have the blonde hair on top and the black hair underneath. and. It really does catch attention. <laughs> well, I've, I've seen so many more. I saw a young lady the other day. One side was absolutely a burr, I mean, almost right to the skin, and then the other side was a great big long hair drooped down. Isn't it ridiculous what people wear? <laughs> I thought maybe that was a trend you might have started. <laughs> no, I, I have not been a stylist. I know that. Uh, I felt that Doris Yoder was gifted when it came to hairstyling, and uh, I really think she was. Uh, but that was not a gift I had. I called mine bread and butter hairdos, and, and I had a good business. There were times that I started work of when I had my own shop that I started work at seven o'clock in the morning, and there were some times that I worked till midnight. Oh boy! But uh, that's a long well, day and on your feet all that time. Too. Well, I was younger then. <laughs> Besides that, uh, it was seasonal. Uh, people usually got a permanent for Easter, and they usually got one for Christmas. And those were your busy times. And so if you had the clientele that wanted their hair done, you didn't want them going someplace else <laughs> because they were your customer. <laughs> And uh, so you work the hours and you work the man. When you left for Odelia's guidance, I'll say, where did you have your shop then? My back bedroom. Okay. Yeah. And uh, that was in uh, 1950. And then in 1951, I had my first child. And she was raised with other people. And when I could, uh, had time to hold her, one of my customers would be wanting to hold her. <laughs> and I remember one time uh, I was having a, a little dress for her and one of my customers says, here, let me do that for you. Uh -huh. And then she said, under her breath, no wonder she can't sew, she doesn't use a thimble. <laughs> And I wonder if young girls today would know what a thimble is. <laughs> Probably not. No. They'd throw it away first. <laughs> They'd say this is a small cup or something. <laughs> oh. The uh, and we we're talking about these trends you've seen for over the years and all. Would you do anything differently if you went back thirty years? I would probably choose factory work. <laughs> Had you ever thought about, well, maybe I should have taught or thought maybe about that? You said teaching was one of the other options. No, I never, okay. I never regretted that. And, uh, and like I say, I, I never considered anything else, but uh, I don't know that I would, I've loved, really loved my work. and never felt that I wish I didn't have to do this sort of thing. Um, now, when I was pregnant with one of my children, though, I had a customer who really bothered me. And I finally told her that I didn't have the time to do her hair. And I felt bad about it, but I also felt a relief to not have her as a customer anymore. Well, I dealt with the business and people for years, too. And I know people can see, be some of the most exasperating things. Yeah. So, I mean, you must have had, especially with hair, and, oh, this didn't come out quite right or something. Did dealing with people would be kind of difficult sometimes, too, isn't it? Well, she must have been, or I wouldn't have told her I was too busy. But she was a nice lady, but I, I just could not handle anymore. Did you ever get into uh, men's haircut and men's styling? 
I've done some, but it's nothing that I really advertised or wanted to, wanted to do a lot of. It's everybody has their comfort zone, and I was not comfortable doing. I still have a couple of men who come to me to get their hair cut. I was just getting. And I've ready. had some that I'm sure would never come back. <laughs> You are still actively doing hair, right? Well, <laughs> uh, I just lost another customer to death. Uh, I only have two who are regular customers. Okay. And then I have people who call in. Um, now, is this on? Yeah. This? I won't mention that. Okay. Um, but like I said, I have a few who call in, but then I couldn't work like I used to. You know, I'm 90 years old now, and I don't have the stamina. Right. And uh, I still get perms, and uh, I may have to say I need to sit a minute before I, I understand. sit up and stand up and go again. Uh, not usually, but then uh, once in a while. And uh, like when I'm combing out a head of hair. When I put hairspray on before I tease, it has to dry a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I plop in a chair for a few minutes while that's drying and then I get back to it. Where years ago I would have stood there and waited. <laughs> Looking at Marshall, say as a youngster, <clears throat> what have you noticed in particular about Marshall that's changed so much? And I'm talking about not only people change, but buildings and everything. Uh, it's quite different than it was uh, even as I remember. Are there some particular fond memories you have about downtown? Well, I remember on the west side of the square, there was a doctor's office and a hatchery and a newspaper office and a hat shop. And of course, that's all gone oh, no. now. Um, the, the south side has changed too. There's been a lot of buildings torn down and others replacing it. And like where Rademacher's oh, yeah. ice cream parlor was, or the attorney's office now. And, Did you ever and, go back into the bottling plant where they used to bottle the double cola? It was cold back there. I can't remember a whole lot about it, but I, I do remember it. I was always fascinated with the machinery and stuff. Oh. I know my dad went back Double there, cola. So Wasn't that what they made? Double cola, yes. Did you uh, ever go to oh, the Saturday night or Friday night concerts. And they're still around. No, no, it wasn't on Friday <clears throat> night. It was used to be Saturday, I think, when I was a youngster. <clears throat> I don't remember for sure. But I remember walking around and walking around and walking around and we girls would be walking around and hoping that the boys were following us, which they usually were. And you probably got a bag of popcorn from the corner popcorn stand too. Most likely. If I had the dime. Because <laughs> I don't know what it costs now. Probably 50 cents. I'm not even sure. Uh, what about the uh, place on the south side? You, know, you didn't mention that you were going around the square called the Strand Theater. Oh. Did you go to movies once in a while there? Oh yes, oh yes. Uh, and there was always a cartoon to go along with the movie and the previews. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. Uh, I remember <laughs> when I was dating my husband, we'd gone to the movie and he, he was kind of clever. And he said, uh, you look like Helen Brown. What? He said, well, you looked like Helen Brown. And I thought he was really saying hell in brown, but it was supposed to be a joke that I looked like Helen Brown. <laughs> you could use it, Helen Red or Helen anything that you wanted to, but that was uh, what he chose. And I remember just being really <laughs> kind of got by it all. <laughs> Was there a particular type of movie that you liked to see there? Oh, love stories, of course. And uh, I was never very fond of, of westerns, <laughs> but uh, I, I did like a lot of the stories. And of course, back when I was growing up, 
you did not get to go see Gone with the Wind because Clark Gable said, I don't give a damn. Oh my, yes, that was a no-no. Yeah. But, uh, now it's a very common thing. His favorite word is if you see gay. It rolls out. Yeah, times, times have changed. <coughs> Definitely. Those, uh, Not for the better. <coughs> I was talking to someone a while back, and we were talking about businesses that were around. And uh, Hotel Black. <laughs> how many grocery stores there were in town? Oh yeah, just everywhere. Lincoln Burgers, gas stations, um, car dealerships. I think there were five, in at least as I remember. Eodel Confectionery was quite a place to go yeah. too. Yeah. And uh, the Black Hotel was there, and it was also the bus stop. Right. And uh, people rode the bus from there to Terre Haute or from there to Paris. And uh, I remember one time I'd gone to the dentist at Paris and my Aunt Rose had gone with me. And coming back there was a Negro who was sitting behind us and he reached around and touched my breast. And my aunt kind of slung her purse at him and uh, then told the bus driver what had happened. And they put the man off the bus in mm. Marshall. Then, of course, you were afraid he'd follow you home. <laughs> I remember the Tom's Restaurant being so popular, too. And the oh, yes. <clears throat> Greyhound. And at one time, Trailways stopped. There for, I think they brought them in for meals. Well, and the Negroes had a, uh, or black people, had a place they had to sit in the black of the restaurant at that time, mm -hmm. too. Yeah. I remember Mr. Davidson, who always ate at the restaurant too when I was working for my aunt, and he always had gravy spots on his tie. Bless his heart. <laughs> I can't think of her name, but the gal that used to make the pies at Tom's. Was it Audrey? The owner? No. Audrey Casepas? I, I want to say it was May or something like that. May Hobson? May she Hobson. was a waitress. Yeah, but didn't but she, she make pies also? I remember, I remember. As I a really don't know. Okay. <laughs> I really don't know. But that was a popular place, and on Sundays, my gosh, there would be people lined up outside yeah. to get in. Well, there weren't many places to eat back at that time. There was Nell's Restaurant. Oh, yeah. And, um... How about the Keystone? Keystone. Yeah, there was a flying by baked beans at the Keystone. <laughs> and there was the Al Cafe. Al? And then later, there was a, the Mecca Cafe opened on the, the north side of the Main Street. Was uh, that Nail's restaurant at one time? No, Mecca was down where Bill Taylor later operated the uh, television. Isn't that place. where Nail's restaurant was? I thought Nail's was down in the next block. I could be wrong. I, uh, I've slept since then, too, but <laughs> it's just interesting how many of these places were around at well, one time. Well, then Harmbrooks, yeah. uh, is that where Jim Davis started his donut shop? I think so. I believe so. Do, uh, do, do you remember the, uh, well, it was Newberry's place there in this intersection? Yeah. And, and there was a restaurant there at one right, time. I think so, yeah. It was fun to go upstairs and sit there at that place. <laughs> they had uh, uh, tenderloin sandwiches that were good. Do you remember what they cost? I have no idea. Yeah, uh, yeah. But that's where Emma Jean Colden met Jim Fritcher. <laughs> that holds a memory for her then, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> but I remember in grade school, once in a while I'd meet my dad for lunch at Tom's, and I think a full meal was 80, 35 cents. It was, I was thinking uh -huh. a little more than that, but it would drink, and you could even get dessert and all whole package for way less than a dollar. I think it was 75 to 80 cents, covered the whole uh, bottle of wax. When I was working for my Aunt Odelia, some of us ate our lunch there. Lunches were 35 cents. I don't remember about anything else, but. Go under those days. Yeah. Agnes, it's They're been gone a forever. Real delight visiting with you, and you've covered a lot of things that that I remember, and some of the things that I don't. Uh, is there a particular person 
that you feel may have the most influence on your life? I'd just say my parents. Good choice. Um, <clears throat> we've all got so many modern things around us today. Yeah. Is there something that you'd say, gosh, I just couldn't live without that? Well, one of the things that I value in my life, which you probably don't know about, is uh, my husband and I ended up with a divorce, uh, actually because of his drinking, and he was not as thoughtful and kind to our manly challenged son as I felt that he should be. And we ended up with a divorce, but I went into what they call the al program, which is for family and friends of those who are concerned about somebody else's drinking. And to me, it has been a, a lifesaver and a change of attitudes about so many things and living one day at a time and putting tra trust in a higher power or God as we choose to call him. Your Aunt Georgie that you mentioned, she was a jewel as far as I'm concerned. Oh yes. She was my second grade teacher. My mother had her as a teacher and then I had her for catechism so <clears throat> we had a lot of associations over the years too. She was just a delight. She was instrumental in, in Roger making his first communion. Oh, Roger doesn't even go to church anymore. Well, none of my kids go to church anymore. But uh, Roger does have a, a problem with coughing and going to the bathroom, so I don't try to insist that he go. I, I think God gave him to him the I'm way he is. The decision's and, up there. Really. Yes. Well, yeah, and you know, um, his understanding is different. And some other people's and so I like I say God gave him to me the way he is and That's he has right. to be the one to take care of him That's right. It's a good way to look at it yeah. I'll, one usually one last question that I ask just about everyone the same thing if you're in another part of the country or even another country and you said I'm from Marshall Illinois and they say where's that and what's that all about what would you tell them about Marshall and why they might want to visit here? I would say, have you ever heard of Terre Haute, Indiana? <laughs> yes. And most of them would say yes. And I said, well, we're 16 miles from there. We're a small town, but really great. Come, what, vi come visit us. <laughs> right. And most people all take good care of their house. Yeah. And the, the neat, uh, the town is neat and it's safe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. think that covers the gamut pretty well. Okay. And I say, Agnes, I really appreciate visiting with you. It's been well, a real, real delight. And that's exactly what, uh, you know, as I said earlier, everyone has a story. And uh, that's what we're looking for them yeah. to tell. Yeah. Well, I could hear Kay in there with you. <laughs> like I said, she's a delightful person, but she loves to talk. Really. I mean, she's gifted. And uh, it's like, uh, I guess in the long run, maybe I'm a little shy. But, like, she loves to go to the nursing homes. Mm -hmm. And she took a, a mini mouse. And I told her, I said, well, they'd all be in the dining room at this time. She said, oh, I, I'm going to go out. So she took her mini mouse, which is a, a big doll, and she went around and she shook Minnie's hand and different ones. And she said, one guy said, oh, when I was a kid, I just loved Minnie Mouse. And she said it made her day, hey. you know, and, and she's gifted with that. And she loves clowning. And one thing you did not mention, clowning. Agnes, is I know you've been deeply involved with the church and with the food and clothing bank and all of those things, which uh, is a great great gift but, to the community, too. Well, yeah. And, you know, I've loved every bit of being out, on, out there on that. And back when uh, my kids were in catechism, you know, the nuns from up at Paris mm -hmm. came down and taught. I always took my day of picking right. them up and taking them back. Well, back at that time, they didn't have cars to drive. <laughs> um, and they had the full habit. Yeah. 
Yeah, I have a cousin who's a, a nun over at St. Mary of the Woods, and uh, she wears just neat suits with a cross on her lapel. Uh, she's the same age I am. We were born two weeks apart. Really? So, and that's yeah. your cousin? Uh-huh. Okay. My uh, mother's sister's daughter. Okay. Uh, she was a Steidel. Do you remember oh, yeah. a Steidel packing house up at Paris? Mm -hmm. Okay, she was one of those. There was a... Uh there's a Steidel Road in yeah. Paris. Well, it runs right from yeah. where that used to be. Uh, well, again, I'll say thank you so much, Agnes. I've, <laughs> well, I've, I've enjoyed, enjoyed this it too. so much. I've enjoyed I'm it too. I'm glad you did. <laughs> <clears throat> this is not for necessarily for today or tomorrow, but someone is going to look at this later or hear it and say, gee, I didn't know that about Agnes. <laughs> but I really thank you and appreciate it. Uh,